Hello, corporate finance students. This is Professor Hassey. It's week four, June 26 to July 2nd for this Business 630 class for this summer session, 2023. We're hard to believe, but we're at our halfway point. We begin our discussion this week on capital budgeting. The next two weeks, <laughs> excuse me, the next two weeks we'll be spending on perhaps one of the most important parts of corporate finance, how to measure whether an investment is doable. The borrowing of money, the issuance of stock, the using of company profits, the three sources of capital in a company that bring that put together the capital structure of a business that fund assets. And are those assets going to pay enough cash flow and profit to pay back the use of that capital and create further growth for the company? To every business in the world, from corporations to sole proprietorships, to partnerships, to not-for-profits, to for-profits, all of them make this decision to whether to invest or not to invest, taking a look at its cost versus the return. And that's what we'll be spending the next two weeks on. We'll be looking at a, uh, a uh, case number uh, two, which has been posted, but you have two weeks to do it. In other words, the case number two is now out there. I urge you to download it, take a look at the template. We'll be practicing problems on that over the next two weeks, or especially over the next week, and looking at the definitions of that discipline. So you have two weeks, so you don't have to worry about anything for this 4th of July weekend. It's all due Sunday, July 9th in spreadsheet format. Case number one, which I'll post the grades by tomorrow, Wednesday, by the way, today is June 27th. I'll post the grades tomorrow, June 28th. Case number one was a APA formatted paper. Case number two is a spreadsheet document. The template is provided you. You just have to put in the numbers and do the arithmetic. So that's where we stand heading into this week and our analysis. Our update video on Friday will include a sample uh, of a capital budget case of which will be used with that template to help you do the problem. So let's begin. So here's where we stand with our Blackboard uh, platform as currently as of today, Tuesday, June 27th. We have a, uh, We've completed the first three assessments and those grades have been uh, posted. Case number one grade will be posted tomorrow. So you get a good idea of where you stand basically for through the first half of our course. Case number two is posted now. It's not due as I mentioned earlier until June, July 9th. Also this week, next, this next week, I will post your case assessment paper, which is the final case, which is due on July 30th. I will post that with a special introduction video to that case as well. So a lot going on, a lot to keep track of. If you have any questions, remember we have student hours every Thursday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. via Zoom. If you uh, cannot make that session, you can contact me and we can arrange another Zoom meeting. You also can post questions to the discussion forum and you can send me an email questions as well. Make sure you stay on top of what you need to do to be prepared because the pace of our class is definitely gonna pick up uh, over the next few weeks. Here's our week number four section. We will have a, uh, a definition of this week of the cost of capital and the capital budgeting process. That's your, that's your task this week is to get up to speed and understand the material in that regard. Some of you might have already had this in a lower undergraduate program. Many of you have not. So again, uh, stay true to the videos and the information that's provided you and you can be in good shape as we head into our capital budgeting over the next two weeks of our class. Here's 
Here is case number two. It's been posted to Blackboard again. It's not due till July 9th. <laughs> Excuse me. Three files are given. The PDF and the Word doc file are both the same files that describe the case. We'll look at that in just a minute. And a template worksheet file where your work should be placed for this case. So all the work is on this worksheet template that I have provided you. Here is the case right now, and I know some of you, this might be a little bit overwhelming or a little bit confusing seeing this for the first time. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Remember, two weeks, over the next two weeks, we'll be preparing for this case. Some of you might be able to start into it. Definitely by this weekend, you'll be able to start into it after you see my Friday update video and what we discuss in this video. You're doing a capital budget risk analysis to determine the net present value, internal rate of return, profitability index, and payback in years of this investment. You are to do two things. First of all, determine the cost of capital, then determine the risk analysis with these variables, and then in part two, prepare a risk analysis, a scenario and sensitivity analysis of this project. Welcome to Business 630 MBA but this is a key component of MBA study. You'll be doing this again in your course assessment case uh, that's due July 30th. This is practice for that case analysis and paper later on in our course. So we will go over this step-by-step step this week and next. Don't worry, you'll be fine. I'm giving you a template to follow, which will save part of the stress and we'll put this to sucker together. Basically, it's an investment of $700,000 with a depreciable life or investment life of seven years and the variables associated with that investment, depreciation, salvage value, revenue, expenses, tax rate, all of that. And you are to put together a capital budget analysis to determine whether this is a good investment or not. That's what we're working now in the next couple of weeks. So please download this now, get a look at it, download the template. Here's the template here. The template has two, three tabs. The first tab is to determine the cost of capital of this company, taking a look at the capital structure. Sound familiar? You did some of that work in case three, or case one. And determine the cost of debt and equity to determine the weighted average cost of capital. Using that cost of capital, then you move on to the capital budget analysis. Here's the template here where you are to put in the numbers over the course of the seven years, do the return analysis, away we go. Once that's completed, then we do a risk analysis of scenario and sensitivity. And we'll learn all these in the next eight days. So this is your template. All your work will be done on this with calculations in the cells, doing the arithmetic and the calculations. This is your template for the case number two. Here's the review file we'll be looking at this week, more specifically in our Friday update video. We're looking at the, a six step capital budget process. What, how much are we investing in an asset? What's its depreciable life? What kind of cash flow is, is being generated from this investment over its depreciable life? Cash flow defined as revenues minus expenses. What is the net cash flow revealing from this investment? the net income plus depreciation, working capital, salvage value. Then once we have all that cash flow, we determine the return analysis by taking a look at the dollar return and the net present value analysis, the percentage return and the internal rate of return, the ratio return and profitability index, and the return in years by the payback. And then once we have that data, is this data reliable? Then we look at the risk analysis scenario and sensitivity. That's what we'll be studying over the next few days and getting an understanding of that. Here's a template to determine a WAC. Here's a template to determine 
the capital budgeting process. Here's a template to determine the risk analysis. Notice it's very similar from the template I gave you for case number two. We will be reviewing this in our, in our, revi in our weekend video, going step by step and putting these pieces together. You'll see a blank copy of this in week four review notes for this week. Then we will calculate and come up with all these answers this Friday. The goal of capital budgeting analysis is to determine whether a project is profitable based on today's dollar value. This approach is appropriate because the project costs are in today's dollar value and the expected cash flows from the projects are in future dollar value. To make a decision on whether to accept or reject a project today, both cost and future cash flows must be in today's dollar value. The factors involved in capital budgeting decisions are future sales, expected cash flows, capital expenditure, timing. The purpose of any investment is to generate profit. To generate profit, first the firm needs to generate sales, manage costs, produce positive cash flows that are large enough to recover the investment and generate profit. In addition, business does not have access to unlimited capital and the availability of capital will influence the investment decision. The timing of each cash flow affects the present value of cash flow and the timing of investment will affect the future revenues. Capital budgeting projects are generally classified as replacement, expansion, safety, security and environment and other. Companies have to replace old equipment because of breakdowns, lower productivity, or technological obsolescence to maintain the production capability of the firm. Replacement projects are the most common capital budgeting project in the business. Expansion project occurs as a result of company's strategy to produce new product or to enter new market or new industries. A change in environment and government regulation leads to safety, security, and environmental projects. Other projects are research and development project based on the strategic planning of the firm. The goal of the capital budgeting analysis is to determine the profitable of the project. Profitability of the project is determined by analyzing three cash flows of the project. One, cash outflows, the money invested in the project. Two, cash inflows, money generated from the investment. Three, terminal year cash flows, money received from the sale of the used assets at the end of the project. Let's draw a timeline for capital budgeting project. Assuming the life of the project is five years, cash outflows are posted on the left hand side at period zero. The cash flows are negative because money is going out of the company. Cash flows generated from the project are referred to as cash inflows and occurs after the investment. They are positive because money is coming into the firm. Assuming that the equipment can be salvaged, the salvage value and any other end of the year cash flows from the project are posted on the year five. The goal of the capital budgeting analysis is to determine profitability of the project. The investment in the project is made on period zero and the cash flows will be received at a future date. In capital budgeting analysis, all the future cash flows, which is CF1, CF2, CF3, CF4, CF5, and terminal year cash flows for year five are brought to today's value by computing the present value of the cash Flow. The difference between the present value of the cash flows and the initial investment is referred to as net present value. If the present value of future cash flows from the project is greater than initial investment, the net present value is positive and project is profitable. The following are commonly used decision criteria to evaluate capital budgeting project. Number one, payback period. Number two, net present value. Number three, internal rate of return. Number four, modified internal rate of return. Number five, profitability index. Payback period. Payback period is the amount of the time required to recover initial investment in a project. It ignores the time value of money. Net present value. Net present value is the difference between present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows. Internal rate of return. Internal rate of return is the rate of return at which the net present value of the project is equal to zero. In the IRR calculation, it is assumed that cash flows from the project are reinvested at the internal rate of return. Modified internal rate of return. Modified internal rate of return is based on the assumption that cash flows from the projects are reinvested at the cost of capital, which is weighted average cost of capital. Initial investment is equated to the sum of the future cash flows that were reinvested 
calculated the cost of capital to compute the interest rate. Profitability index. Profitability index is the ratio between present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows. Project acceptance or rejection criteria. If net present value is greater than or equal to zero, project is acceptable. If the net present value is less than zero, reject the project. Internal rate of return is greater than or equal to cost of capital. Project is acceptable. If, it's, if the IRR is less than cost of capital, reject the project. Modified internal rate of return greater than or equal to cost of capital, accept the project. If MIRR is greater than or equal to cost of capital, project is acceptable. If MIRR is less than cost of capital, reject the project. If profitable index is greater than the one, accept the project. If profitable index is less than one, reject the project. Okay, not the most thrilling of videos, I can honestly say, but it just gives us the overall view of what you see in front of you is a capital budget analysis. It's a determination of net cash flows, determining revenues and expenses, the initial year investment, your cost of capital, that's your discount rate, and the net year or life of the project by its depreciable life. So what we'll be doing is filling this in, determining our net cash flows, determining our re investment return analysis by th four different me methods. Do not worry about the modified internal rate of return mentioned in that video. We will do not, we will do not be responsible for that. But what is our return in dollars, percent, disc in a ratio, and in years? That's what we'll be determining. Then coming out of that, we'll look at sensitivity analysis heading into the second week of our analysis. So that's where we're headed to this week. Try to review, try to set this up and take a look at case number two and get a feel for what you have to do for that. And we'll talk more about that at the end of the week. Okay, so in week number four, you'll see here a lecture review file. This is the file we're gonna be working on in our Friday update weekend update video. It's a blank file, which we'll fill in and you can go ahead and on your own, if you'd like to try it, go right ahead. We will work on this on Friday. It's a template for the case study template that I've provided for the casework. So this review file in week four will be practice and review for the case study file folder given to you. Clear as mud, huh? The bottom line is to learn about capital budgeting analysis. And we'll be spending two weeks on this. So have a great week, everybody. We'll see you all in our video this weekend. Until then, adios.